everybody, E here. Welcome back to Top 5 Friday. This is the third in a series of my top 20 books of all time. And today, let's see if I can get it right. We are working on numbers 10 through 6. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Top 5 <laughs> Friday. I, like I said in the last video, I always have a problem with, uh, with that. There are 5, <laughs> but... It seems like there's only four because there's a difference of four between ten and six, but I'm repeating myself. We're going to jump right into it with the number ten spot, which is The Halloween Tree by Ray Bradbury, with, with a caveat. This book is written in a poetic nature, um, but it is, I feel, it is a perfect thematic experience where Halloween is concerned. I feel that this book is to Halloween what Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol is to Christmas. That's how much I love this and it is on this list as I've said in the other two videos there's a reason for each and every book on here um, and there's never a repetition of theme and this time it's Halloween. Um, I'm a horror fan. I was, I was an outsider growing up of course, I love Halloween. I love darkness. I love th those things. I don't know. It's not a, a gothic mentality. It's just one of those one of those things. I love Halloween, and this is the perfect ex example of why everything that I love about Halloween is in this book. The history, the culture, the even the uh, the 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 idea, the, the, the candy, the, the selling, the corporation, all that stuff. While it's very, very small, he does focus heavily on all of the cultural aspects and the different, uh, the different spectrum of beliefs uh, that you, know, you go from Egypt to Ireland to Mexico, to all, all over the place. And I appreciate that, but there's also that feeling of, you know, there's just the trick-or-treating and just the candy aspect also. I appreciated that. It's the whole thing. It's the whole package, and I loved it. Now, I know my friend uh, and fellow author Chad Lutsky does not like this book. So be I think because the language is too plain for him, it's more of a children's book. And it is. It's, pr it's published by Yearling. Um, I also have fond uh, memories of the, the cartoon. Uh, that was, I think, Leonard Nimoy played Mound Shroud. I can't, or voiced Mound Shroud. I, I can't remember. <clears throat> Maybe he was just a narrator. But if you want a more adult feel to this, a more, whether it be violent or bloody or gruesome or just a more adult language, I have another choice for you. Um, it is not tied for me. It is a close second on the Halloween list. If the, the Halloween tree was not on the, this list, this story would be. There is, I don't, I don't think there's bias, but there is. A, I do have a connection to the author. His name is Gregor Zane. Um, his story, The Wriggle Twins, in the first Bad Apples anthology. I have a story in that anthology also. I don't want you to pay any attention to that. I don't even care if you pay any attention to the other three stories in there. Gregor Zane's The Wriggle Twins is a perfect adult take on Halloween. He captures the essence of Halloween perfectly if you're looking for a more adult experience. I'm not talking adult and sex. I'm talking the, the violence and the, the disturbing nature of the content. Whereas this one, while it can be at times disturbing, I tried reading it to my son last year. We had to quit because it was too scary for him. Um, but he's a little more sensitive to uh, the, the uh, he was six at the time. He's a little he's a little more sensitive to the horror aspects of it. And when you get to the point with the uh, the the Grim Reaper and the scythe and all that stuff, he was terrified for the boys, and we had to stop, unfortunately. But that's my number ten spot. In my number nine spot, we have the Traveling Vampire Show by Richard Lehman. Um, the reason this is on the list is because it is an accomplishment for me, and this is going to sound going to sound like a, a hunk of braggadocio, a hunk of bragging, and it is. Um, I think that th this is a book that I set out to write my own version of. Um, I, my novel, Bay's End, was, was written with several books as inspiration. The Voice of the Night by Dean Koontz, that was on this list at one point in time. 
um, when I had repetition, I had that and Twilight Eyes. Um, I've since matured quite a bit, and I've grown away from Richard Lehman and Dean Koontz, and, uh, well, not Jack Ketchum. Jack Ketchum will be a favorite of mine for all time, but Jack Ketchum's a girl, The Girl Next Door is another one that inspired that book. But this one, it inspired the, it's the relationship between the, the trio. Um, it's those three kids that inspired me to write the trio of friends that is in Bay's End. There is a fourth one, um, there's Sanders, but uh, the, the main trio of Trey, Eddie, and Candy are basically the trio that are in here, replaced with me, my best friend, and my first, I guess you want to call her girlfriend, my first, um, you know, my first kiss kind of thing. Um, so that's, that's where this comes in. It's a matter of me finally overcoming, I think, this is, this, I know this sounds terrible, I think my book is better than this book. Um, and, but it's on this list because if this book did not exist, I never would have written my book. Now, Jack Ketchum's The Girl Next Door is not on this list at all. I don't have a place for it because there's only, there's, there's one more book that I like more than that one that fits that theme, but we'll get to that because it's in my top five. But if that book wasn't in my top five, The Girl Next Door by Jack Ketchum would be on this list. In fact, it hurts me just to think that, you know, Ketchum's book is not on this list, but I feel that a repetition of theme would defeat the purpose of this list. I hope that makes sense. Let me know down there in the comments below if you disagree. So, next up, we have, and also, I, I, I have not beaten The Girl Next Door. I think Jack Ketchum's book is far superior, but I think mine is better than that one. Mm, hate me down there in the doobly-doo. So, next up, uh, at uh, number duh, 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 what, eight, at number eight, we have Invisible Monsters by Chuck Palahniuk. I hear loads of stuff about uh, Fight Club and <laughs> Fight Club and Fight Club and Fight Club. I don't care much for the Fight Club, the book at all. I prefer the movie. Don't at me. Um, I prefer the movie over the book. It's just an e it's just a simpler uh, consumption of that piece. I also don't think it's anywhere near his best work. Um, it's something that he will forever be remembered for that I don't think he needs to be remembered for. If he's going to be remembered for anything, I think it would be either Choke or Invisible Monsters. Um, Invisible Monsters more so because it is the peak of his satire. It is the peak of him writing in uh, using style. Uh, his peak experimentation with style that he actually succeeded with. You have you have experiments with style like Pygmy that is a complete and utter clusterfuck. You have a uh, style in Snuff that has an alternating uh, first person perspective with like 10 different people. It gets super confusing because it's only like a 200 page book. You never know whose mind you're in. At least I didn't. Um, and I think his top three Polonic books, in fact, you know what, I'm going to leave that for a top five Polonic books when I do my reread, but, uh, so I won't tell you here. Uh, but this one, he tried to mimic the verbiage of, like, a cosmopolitan magazine, um, a glamour magazine, is what he did. And after reading this book for the first time, I went out and I bought several copies of Cosmopolitan, Glamour, um, Elle, a, a bunch of different magazines. I brought them home and I read them and I was fascinated by how well he was able to write a book of fiction based on that style. Um, there's more to be said uh, if this book wasn't on this list, Amina Akhtar's uh, hashtag fashion victim would be in this spot. Because it is, it is a parody, it is a satire, but it is also a damn fine work of fiction. Apollonic always has that little twist at the end um, where it's like, oh, oh what, well, holy shit. Uh, in this one, I think that Choke has the better holy shit moment. Um, I, I don't care too much for the holy shit moment in Fight Club at all, but um, I... I I think it's funny that that has gotten as much success as it has, whereas Choke or Invisible Monsters has not. Um, there's a bit, and all I want to say about this is there is a bit with the color blue at the end that is absolutely brilliant, and it's, I think it's the best thing he's ever written. But as far as why it's on this list, it is an experimentation with style that goes outside of your typical narrative stylistic choices that he absolutely nailed. And that's why it's my number eight spot. 
Now, going into the number seven spot, we have One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Kesey. Uh, I've read this book multiple times throughout my life, I think three times so far, and each and every time it has meant something different to me, but there is a constant theme throughout. It is the best portrayal I've found of mental illness as both objectified individuals and human beings. You have both sides here. You have the, the chief character, the Murphy character, the entire cast of, of patients, at this uh, insane asylum, care facility, whatever you want to call it. Um, you have every single aspect of how the mentally ill are treated in our society, especially back then. Um, you have, they're treated like animals, but, they're, but then you get them around each other and they, they treat each other like human beings. You have these mentally in, ill individuals who are all broken in some drastic way even Murphy Murphy doesn't think he is and I think that's the beauty of the of the narrative is that Murphy thinks he's perfectly fine where he is and then he comes to he he he, he, he well he never comes to to grasp how sick he actually is and then you come to the ending which is one of the most powerful endings I have ever read aside from of mice and men um, and the only reason, once again, if we were going for a comparison, if you didn't like this book, I would say try Of Mice and Men, because oddly enough, even at, even at 270 pages, some people think it goes on too long, um, and the setting and the themes get tiresome. If you want the same themes, go check out Of Mice and Men, but from my, the bang, bang from my book, I go with One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, but I love both books equally. It's not a matter of love on this list. It is a matter of theme and what these books mean to me. Um, there, there's probably you know a thousand books I love that mean something to me, but they're all in the same classification. And I'm wondering if maybe I should do a series like that. Maybe I do my top carnival novels or whatever. I think I've been doing that anyways um, with things because people keep requesting uh, great ideas like a uh, top five villains and whatever. And you'll see these books, but you. You won't see all of these books on those lists. Sometimes you will see books on those lists that aren't on this list at all, whatsoever. And that's because I think that those aspects, like the best villain, you have Nurse Ratchet. I put Nurse Ratchet in there because, and I fully, fully believe that One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest is a horror novel. I know I get a lot of flack for that, but I believe that One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest is a horror novel because of Nurse Ratchet. She is a terrifying monster. Um, of an individual. Uh, and then you have, there's such a balance there with Chief and Murphy and Ratchet. It's that triangle there that just, uh, you have the neutral, chaotic, you have neutral, chaotic good, um, because of the good that he brings to the group as a whole, and then you have the evil. You have evil, neutral, good. So, and yeah, I know saying Murphy is good is a controversial statement, but here we are. And here we go on to the number six spot. I gotta get this right. It's the number six spot on the list, the last one for today, and that is Sing, Unburied Sing by Jesmyn Ward. This is a newer addition uh, to, to this list. Uh, I would say newer because I just read it, I think, within the past two years. Uh, Where the Line Bleeds by her is equally fantastic. In fact, I might like that one more. Again, I know it's confusing, but I, I might like that one a bit more. But as far as race relations go, this is the book I point at when people bring up uh, writing race properly. And that's why that's on my list. And that's why it's so far up on my list. If you'll remember in the last video I was saying these are the things that mean the most to me and at number six is race relations. Now where the line bleeds there is not, there, I don't, I, if there are white people in that book there, there's not too much going on but the importance of this book is how the, that you have the, the black family, you have the white family, you have the mixed couple. It's almost, not really, but it's almost a Romeo and Juliet type thing because the, the white parents are of course far more disliking of the relationship between the the black woman and the white man than the the black family although there is that animosity on the other side also that that distaste but i think the 
the way Jasmine Ward tackled race relations in this book, I've, I've never felt it more powerfully than I did in this book. Um, because if I mean, if you're a fan of the channel, you know my wife's black. But it's one of those things that. But what made me look at this closer and inspect it and really get down with the microscope is after I had my kids. You know, what are my kids? You know, how are people going to treat and react to my children? Is it even something I can control? Is it something that I have to ignore? Or what? what is it? And I've been fighting with that since then because we do get a lot of flack living where we live. Um, in the, we live in the southern United States. We do get a lot, a lot of flack here. And this book covers those aspects as well. I just really loved the way she tackled it without being, I guess, uh, not subjective, without, being, without harping on one side or the other. Um, she wasn't. She didn't show favoritism. I don't feel, and I feel like if I were to write a book like this, I would probably show favoritism to one side or the other. Uh, whether which side that would be, I'm gonna leave that for you to think and form your own opinion. But um, with with this book, it's definitely here for the race relations, but also the writing's fantastic. I mean, let's throw that out there. This book wouldn't be on this list if it wasn't so damn well written. But part of the reason. I love this, Well, it, but that's part of the race relations, is it is so well written to make all these characters believable and true, and then you get to the ending, and there's a fantastic magic feel to the ending that, that just blew me away. It is a complete experience, and it has the amazing race relations. I, I really cannot recommend this book high enough, and I don't talk about it enough. That's why I'm kind of just going on and on. I want everybody to go out and grab it, or anything that Jasmine Ward has written. I've only read two of her books so far, but I have perused uh, her nonfiction, Men We Reap. The Men, uh, yeah, Men We Reap, uh, Salvage the Bones, and Where the Line Bleeds. I do not. I have not read Salvage the Salvage the Bones or Men We Reaped, but I have glanced through them, and the writing is just as terrific in there as it is in this one. Um, so let me know if you have a uh, top twenty list or a, a top five or whatever. Share that stuff down there. If you have a top twenty and you want to split it up with these videos like I'm doing, that would be cool too. Um, if you just want to talk about some of your favorite books or any of the books that I discussed in this video, please do so down there in the doobly-doo, and I'll see you there. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another Top 5 Friday. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!